good morning boys and girls today we are not doing any detecting instead we're going to answer a question that i get a lot by email sometimes i get it in the comments people want to know i've heard it's not legal to detect on the beach or where can i go to detect or will i get arrested for metal detecting all kinds of stuff like that so today we're going to answer that question i'm going to show you where it is legal some popular spots well-known areas Nothing secret, not giving nothing away. So then I'm going to show you some spots where you definitely should not go detecting. So, let's go put some gas in the truck and let's go get it done. on North Beach we got the USS Lexington over that way uh, the storm is over there we seem to have missed it for the time being I'm kind of disappointed you know I have my rain jacket wanted to do like some severe weather type stuff but I guess that ain't gonna happen anyway we got North Beach out here all kinds of restaurants hotels in both directions uh, this is a man-made beach usually pretty calm today it's a little windy but great place to detect if you detect in this location, you're likely to run into some guys that have been detecting this area since before I've been alive. They are a very friendly group, they're a wealth of information, and they will talk to you at great length about the history of the area. So here you go guys, this is North Beach. Very popular spot. we're at McGee Beach this is another man-made beach this is right in downtown Corpus Christi we'll have a little look at the beach during holidays this place is packed weekends eh, not too bad traffic but it's a good place to hunt if you guys noticed on the flyover we went over to the marina or as we like to call it the tea heads on the tea heads you're going to find all kinds of little restaurants a lot of them are dog friendly prime example harrison's landing great food dog friendly you can also get a shrimp fresh off the boat you got your little fur buddy bring him along Horace Caldwell Pier in Port Aransas, Texas. There is the pier. Good fishing. And we got the beach. Lots of beach. Lots of beach. Lots of parking. Easy driving. You can drive down the beach south that way for miles. Miles. Well, not that many. golf cart standard equipment in Port Aransas. There's probably more of those than there are cars. Alright, we're at Bob Hall Pier. This is a really great place to come. we got all kinds of little picnic tables here. You can park right there. The beach is right here place to eat right over there and you have all this beach to detect now remember eight miles that way is the national seashore so you got eight miles of beach you can go this way and then we're turning around and you got two or three miles of beach you can go that way that's a lot of beach let's talk about driving on the beach what do you need to drive on the beach well it comes in handy to have one of those. You're also going to need one of these. Beach parking permit. Not required everywhere, but for about 12 bucks, it's definitely worth it. Do you really need a truck or a four-wheel drive to drive on the beach here? 
Well, the answer depends on where you go. In some places, a truck with um, some high clearance would definitely be helpful. In other places, you definitely need a four-wheel drive. It just depends. Conditions change out here every day. Just be careful. So to sum up driving on the beach, number one, make sure you have a beach sticker. What was that two? <laughs> number one, make sure you have a beach sticker. Number two, make sure you know what your vehicle is capable of. If you're not sure, stick to the paved areas and stay close to the access roads you should be fine now if you do happen to get stuck out at the beach one of the locals will probably pull you out they might do it out of the kindness of their heart yeah. or they might want a little money some beer something like that what you definitely don't want to do is have to call a tow truck to get pulled out of the beach that will run you in the hundreds and hundreds of dollars entrance to a Mustang Island State Park. There used to be a sign over there, but now it's gone. But anyway, here's the park. The park on the southern end is marked by pylons on the beach. So if you're coming from that direction, you will clearly see the pylons stop there. Don't go. The northern boundary of the park is an old jetty. So if you're coming from the north and you run into that jetty, don't go any further. Just to let you know, that the state park also includes this land that's on the other side of the beach. There's little signs that say park entrance open down some of these access roads. No detecting over there. We are at the northern boundary of the Padre Island National Seashore, clearly marked by these large, imposing pylons. <laughs> Bob Hall Pier is about eight miles that way. This area on the other side of these poles is a definite no-go zone. Padre Island National Seashore, no, do not do it. Guys, let's talk a second about uh, Padre Island National Seashore. If you're a metal detector, you know what uh, went down out here at Padre Island. If you don't, do your research. Here's the deal. I stopped by the park entrance and uh, asked the ranger a few questions. They didn't want to be on camera. That's perfectly understandable. But we got some answers. Metal detecting on the Padre Island National Seashore is definitely not allowed. You might ask yourself, well, what if I'm out metal detecting and I just want to come to the seashore? Okay, well, here's what you got to do. You have to disassemble your metal detector, like take it apart, and you need to stow it away, whether that's in a box, in a bag, something like that, and put it in your trunk. If you are caught on the national seashore with a metal detector, penalties can range anywhere from a very stern warning to confiscation of your detector, confiscation of your vehicle, stiff fines and penalties, and time in a federal prison. Hopefully that answers your questions about the National Seashore. Let's keep going. We're here at a little bonus spot. This is a uh, public beach area. There is a hotel over there, and there is a hotel over there. We got a parking lot, easy access, or you can also get to it by driving down the beach. All, this beach. all the way over there to Packery Channel, all the way down. Yeah, it's a lot of beach. All right, guys, here's another little bonus spot. We are on the north side of uh, Packery Channel. Packery Channel runs up that way, big fishing area, big surfing area. The beach runs all the way down there. You got easily a few miles of beach. Big party spot. All you dry sand guys, it's a good area. Well, all right. That is going to do it. We put a little over 100 miles on the Krusty Mobile, and we are headed to the house. I hope you found the information useful. You can hit me up in the comments, or you can email me. Not a problem answer your questions for you you're going to be in the area going to be visiting or if you're local you want to go hunt hit me up 
And as always, thank you for spending some of your time with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing all that good stuff. And we will see you on the next one. Till then.